You're on the clock with Tyler Jennings and Jared Perkins. A Prospects Live podcast for everything MLB draft related. Join us as we discuss the biggest stories from college and high school baseball. Bring you interviews from your favorite draft prospects and break down live looks with Prospects Live analysis across the nation. Get ready because you're on a clock with Tyler Jennings and Jared Perkins. All righty, welcome to another episode of On the Clock. I am Jared Perkins. That's Tyler Jennings. I think he's over there. Tyler, how are you Hi. doing? Are you a bird? You're great. <laughs> And we're kicking off the show late. If you can't tell, we're recording this after 9 p.m. We might be going a little crazy. Uh, Tyler, how are you doing today? Uh, Tyler's very tired. He's got a, a cider with him because it's been a long day. Love it. Um, some good, some bad. Work sucked. Um, but it doesn't matter because guess what? What? We're here to talk baseball. And that's all that matters. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, we are. We got a lot of baseball to talk about. Um, we've had some... Good performances over the weekend. We had some uh, not so great performances by some schools. Uh, let's get into that first. Wake Forest. Uh, they're continuing to struggle. They're now seventeen and ten. They're at the bottom of the top twenty-five on uh, D1Baseball.com. Not great. What are your thoughts there? Um. I so here's my thing. I think we've talked about it before. But Wake Forest struggles um, the mm -hmm. past couple weeks, and it's like. This UNC team, this is probably more of just showing how good of an offense this UNC team is more than it is yeah. just like showcasing how much Wake Forest is struggling. Because um, like, it, yeah, sure. Wake Forest is 17 and 10. Um, going into this weekend, they had just come off a, a pretty good series victory against Louisville, which, yes, it's Louisville, but it's a good bounce back after kind of the rough stretch that they've gone through. Um but this UNC team, man, this UNC team is pretty legit. They got Casey Cook, really, really good right fielder. Vance Honeycutt struggled a little bit this weekend. But Parks Harbor had probably one of the best weekends of anybody in the country this year. Um, D'Onofrio looked pretty good. There's a few others that really stood out in that UNC lineup. And plus, like, Matthew Maggis, I think is his name, uh, really stood mm -hmm. out. Struck out five in relief for appearance. Um, they've really impressed me this year Folger Fol Boat like UNC just top to bottom might be in contention for the best team in the ACC um and just with Wake it's like yes Chase Burns got lit up but he still went six struck out double digit guys again for like the fifth straight week in a row or something like 14. that sorry about it yeah like <laughs> I mean but that's yeah. the thing is like you, you talk about how good the offense is right that they're putting up nine hits and six earned on the best pitcher in the country basically yes. Pretty much. And like Josh Hartle is, I didn't even know what Josh Hartle, happened to Josh Hartle this weekend, but I would imagine he probably got lit up again, didn't he? No, he did not. He didn't. He went four okay. and two third innings, two earned, struck out seven. Okay. So not too bad. Not too yeah. bad. Cause I know they, cause they switched the two around. I mm -hmm. know that much because they wanted to give Hartle, I guess, an extra day of rest. And uh, our so boy he got, uh, Hidden LeFew did not pitch well out of the bullpen. Well, he's still got a couple years until he's eligible. Yeah. So, like, Oof. yeah, I'm just looking at the bullpen ERAs right now for Wake. Uh, Will Ray gave up four, and Ben Chinoski gave up four, and this is on Friday night, I or no, Sunday, sorry, with Michael Massey on the mound. Um, yeah. who started that game again? I, was, I think Chinoski like, was the one that got taken deep like twice in the ninth inning or something. Yeah, absolutely insane. Um, not great for Wake Forest. They're four and eight in the ACC play now. I guess the one question I have for you: Who are you taking, Wake Forest or Virginia? ACC wise, are you going Virginia here? Maybe Virginia. Yeah. The thing with Virginia, because I did just see them over the weekend against Duke, and like bats are deep. I, dude, year in year out, Virginia just always hits. Uh, yeah. Trying to think, Griffo Farrell lead off three doubles on the weekend. Henry Ford had a couple doubles on the weekend. Um, Casey Salke was just lighting the ball on fire this weekend. Um, Harrison did it, kind of struggled a little bit, but you can still see the potential there. I, for one thing, with Didowick, I don't think he's got the arm to really move to like a right field position if he has to go off center. I think he's a left fielder. The the, yeah. the arm's kind of pretty iffy. Um, Henry Godbout looked pretty good, though. I do have some some things to kind of talk about there because 
like the contact rate's been amazing this year. Yeah. I don't think there's anybody doubting that. Um, the fact that he's hitting seventh in that lineup kind of really shows how deep it is. Mm-hmm. And with Ethan Anderson behind him in that lineup too. Yeah. Uh, but with God Belt, like I have some questions about the swing a little bit, and we can dive into that later. Um, well, the thing with Virginia is that the pitching kind of hasn't been the greatest this year. Um, Jack O'Connor is no longer going to be pitching this year. He he tore his lat against either Wake Forest or he may have done it during the pit series. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but he's he's been confirmed to to be out for either a significant amount of time or end of the year. I can't remember which. Um, and like Kevin Jackson performed pretty well. He was probably the best starter they had this weekend. Um, kind of just a mix mixed bag results for that team. And like Jay Wolf will kind of struggle to get sun, uh, Duke on Sunday, you know, yeah. two quick outs and then kind of just lost command and it really kind of faltered. So they don't have the arms to kind of really go against some of the heavyweights, but excuse me, the, the bats in that lineup, man, just one through nine, they all rake. That was the thing is that they're either going to out slug you or they're going to lose. That's their basically options. <laughs> yeah. Um, you talked about God that a little bit. I saw him against Wake and he was impressive in some sense where like the there wasn't a lot of movement to the swing, right? But I think he does get the ball on the ground sometimes a little bit too much. But um when he was facing Chase Burns, man, he like just turned on ninety nine up in the zone. Um and there was no movement to the swing. He just got bat barrel to ball really quick. Yeah, I think you nailed it on the head there, because my thing with God Belt, and I'll, I'll pull up a video here kind of like to show what I'm talking about here. If you want to put it in there, you can. I just put it in. Um, but this is the the double he had, I think, against someone on Saturday. I can't remember exactly who it was, but you can kind of see what we're talking about when there's not much movement. Like the, the front legs kind of opened up a little bit. Like you can tell um, right there. And it, it for me, it feels like it's a lot of upper body strength more mm-hmm. than it is anything else in the swing. Like there's it's not much getting, in the legs. Yeah, there's not much lower half movement. It's a little stiff. Um, but he does such a good job of like keeping barrel on ball. He does a very good job of, of seeing spin. He can he can recognize pitches, which is great. Um, and I think he's one of the better 2025 bats as a result, and he can play a really good second base. But I would really like to see some more lower half usage out of that swing. Mainly because I feel like he's going to get more power out of it, and yeah. I think it's going to look not aesthetically pleasing. Like I already kind of like the swing it as it is. It looks good. It's just that lower half looks stiff. It doesn't feel like he's getting much usage out of it, and it's just all upper body. Yeah, um, you imagine a team that takes that though and finds it, and if he can find that power in that lower half too, I bet you that's something he's going to see this off season too, going into his draft year. Be like, oh, oh yeah, that's what I want to get adjusted. He's probably going to be a USA guy, to be honest with you, um, yeah. which is which is fun for me because I don't have to travel <laughs> five hours to Charlottesville. But, yeah. you know, I, I just really want to see something used out of that lower half. And if, if he does, cool. Perfect. This is probably one of the best ACC bats next year. And if he's hitting for power, thumbs up for me. Yeah, yeah and like, that's the thing. It's like the i think your critique is kind of fair too because it's like there's so much good in that swing it's just getting that one little adjustment to to really take it to the next level yeah because i feel like once he sees some better stuff too he's going to be kind of flailing at some breaking balls away because of the fact that he's just kind of standing up more than anything else like you can't from that kind of position you're not really going to be able to get to something like a a slider loan away like that That might be his bugaboo moving forward, but if he if he irons that out, I think he'll be fine. Yeah, and to me, when I watched him, especially when he was facing like Burns and come some guys with high velo, like he really relied on his his hands and how quick he was to the ball, um, and that's why I think he went with that over like kind of getting the power from his legs, right? And so, like you're talking about, if he's seeing off speed pitches and he's not just sitting dead red on a fastball, he's going to start flailing and swinging out of the zone. Yeah, I actually want to see if all of his home runs have come off of fastball so give me like two interesting he has what four or five this year i think i think so let me double check just to be sure here um 2024 so he's actually only got three um and kind of looking on what he's done it against two fastballs one curveball so he's kind of letting the the pitching supply to power because 
I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what usually what you're taught to do is let, let the pitcher supply the power for you and then just swing easy. It's kind of like the same thing with golf. Like you swing easier. You're not going to be, you're just not too much movement to where you're kind of out of control. Um, but I mean, it's just, it's going to be interesting to see how he adjusts as he matures and he starts to see a bit more advanced stuff. Yeah. One other guy I want to talk about. I got a, some video here that you got Griff O'Farrell. Cause I really like this kid. I know you do too. We'll mute that. That wind is going. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Sunday was, or sorry, Saturday was windy. Sorry. I think it's Tuesday right now. I'm, I'm losing it. Talk the, about his uh, approach at the plate. I don't, so here's my thing with O'Farrell. I really like to bat the ball. It's yeah. a lot of contact. He's going to focus on contact more than power because he's, he's added about 10 pounds of weight, but also it's kind of like, eh, it's, it's still maybe like fringy at best, yeah. depending on how much more weight he adds. He does chase a little bit and he's a bit of a, a quote unquote free swinger a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that really kind of applies to the rest of that Virginia lineup too. Like Casey Salke yeah. swings a bit above average. Um, mm-hmm. Harrison Didowick does the same thing. Um, and they're all kind of really aggressive, but also at the same time, like they're all having, you know, contact rates over 80%. Yeah. So it's like, it, it's a give and take situation, but with him, it's like, it's going to be a potentially 55, 60 hit tool with maybe 40, 45 power and the ability to really play up the middle. Like, I didn't think he was really a shortstop coming into the weekend. I have come away from that weekend thinking this is a guy that's like dead set on defensively at the next level. He yeah. looks really good. I mean, the only that knock I'd have on him is his arm, but um, it, it was kind of average from what I was seeing. But I mean, he makes the plays like he can get lateral left to right and he's going to make the plays. It's a lot of range. It's a yeah. lot of range for the kid. And like, trying to think he had to play up the middle this weekend on a, a ball from ben miller it was kind of like a jam shot up the middle slide is like slide on the run to his left get the ball and then just no look club flip to god bout at second for the force that that was a really good play yeah that was a really good that that kind of sold me on like okay he's got the range for his position what's the arm look like i think we have I thought, a video too so we might yes. throw it in here yes we do right there Boom. Can yep. kinda, it's a little far, but you can still see it. Hey, I, oh, I tried my best to get the camera adjusted for it. All right. Let, let's. It looks great. I love it. I love the angle because you get the center fielder too. But yeah. like, I think the biggest question you said was the arm. I think the arms are definitely a lot stronger than what it was this time last yeah. summer. Because uh, collegiate, I kind of had questions like, okay, does the arm strafe really work at shortstop? Because he was kind of struggling to get across the diamond a little bit. Now it's kind of like, Okay, he's the, the handwork, the footwork, and now he's got the mm-hmm. arm strength to really get across the diamond. I think somebody's going to try him out there until maybe a yeah. better defender knocks him off the position, but he'll stick up the middle, I think. Yeah, he's got he's got the range I wish Matt Shaw had, or would wish that Matt Shaw would have. Um, if Matt Shaw could have that range, he would definitely be a shortstop at the major league level. One hundred percent. I do see like the, the not to go into the match style tangent, but I see the Cubs putting him at third base or trying him at third base. I'm like, hmm, that arm. I don't know if that's gonna play over there, but maybe he's gotten stronger. Hopefully. Hopefully he has. Yeah. Um, other things to note from the weekend. Uh, so we had Arkansas sweep the reigning champs, LSU. Mm-hmm. Not great. Um, but it's also the number one team in the nation right now, Arkansas. So um, tough look for LSU. They came in a lot, in a lot of polls at number one to start the year. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, my first thought is that they just don't have the Paul Skeens and Dylan Cruz that they had for. They have a very good team, right? They have decent pitchers, but they don't have like that Paul Skeens ace. Um, you had Ty Floyd, who was your number two at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, two guys who like basically went in the first two rounds, I think. I think Floyd was a second rounder or like a comp round pick. He was a second rounder, yeah. Yeah. And then it's like you've got good bats, like in Tommy White and others, but <laughs> it's hard to replace a Dylan Cruz in the middle of your lineup. It is. And like a lot of these guys are young, like Stephen Malam's a yeah. freshman, Jake Brown's a freshman. Uh, I think the biggest thing kind of looking at their roster is the pitching. The pitching's mm-hmm. not been 
nothing all that great. Like Thatcher Hurd's run into some issues this this year, yeah. which I was hoping he'd iron out. Like per, I love Thatcher Hurd personally. I've loved him since his high school days, um, but just the command's not working. And it yeah. is, it's he's, he, he gets stretches where he's pretty good, but then there's times where it just falls apart. Uh, Gay Shump can probably be classified as that same thing, but I think he's got better potential. Um, but finding a consistent guy, like Cam Johnson's kind of struggling a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Griffin Herring's been pretty solid out of the bullpen. I will say that much. Uh, and even like you mentioned LSU kind of sucking right now. Um, they're two and seven in SEC play. And as of right now, as of recording this, they're bottom seven losing to Southern <laughs> nine to six at the box. Um, Oof. Which is that's that's gonna be rough. Georgia uh, Southern, is that who it no, is? No, just Southern University swag oh. team. <laughs> I was like, oh, Georgia Southern comes time it's like sneaky good, but guess not. Yeah, and I'm just looking at that right now too. Like Kate Anderson, Kate Anderson is kind of like an underrated midweek guy for them. He's eligible next year as a sophomore. He struck out mm-hmm. six and in two innings, uh, but kind of did get lit up a little bit. Allowed a home run. Um, but like Christian Little has a ERA north of ten. Justin Lower, his he got roughed up again tonight. He's got ERA about six and a half. Micah Bucknum's around six. It, it's it's a little rough. Yeah, not what you really want to see. Um, I I mean it's Jay Johnson, so if he's gonna pull something off, he's he'll pull something off. I think they'll still be a playoff team somehow. Um, I think they'll make their way. Um. But it's just not the same LSU team of last year, for sure. No, definitely. And, and the weight classifies as the same thing. Like, all those guys had career years all at the same time for weight. Yeah. Um, and now you're kind of seeing the effect of it's a young team. There's a lot of young arms that have inexperience. And I think LSU kind of folds into that same bucket, too. It's just a lot of guys with inexperience. This isn't the same kind of, like, the veteran depth that they had last year with – um, uh trying to think jordan thompson i think it's his name mm-hmm. jordan thompson yeah. uh beloso all those guys are gone now and dylan cruz obviously not being there is is a big gut punch with schemes and floyd also gone like that team mm-hmm. got gutted in the draft and they did the best they could to really reload and uh, sometimes you win sometimes you lose you know that's yeah. just the way it goes and like for all we know, we could be talking about LSU and Wake Forest being like the dogs of the ACC and SEC again in a month's time. Like, yeah. Everything like that. Flips in a switch. Know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to talk about one team that's been red hot, and that's Texas A&M. Swept Auburn. Raiden Montgomery hit four home runs and drove in seven this weekend. Or I don't know if that's this weekend or if it was throughout the week. It might be throughout the week. But it was absolutely insane. He was... <laughs> He was also walked twice, didn't strike out either over the weekend. So have a time, Brayden Montgomery. Dude, he is like the hottest bat in the country. If it, I know Blake Wright drove in twenty one last <laughs> week, <laughs> but um, Brayden's been on an absolute one. tear recently, and like. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to brag a little bit. I do get Texas A&M this week at South Carolina. I'm excited mm. for that series, man. That, That'll be fun. Him and Jace at the top of that lineup. Hayden shot. Um, you got to go say hi to Roman. Yes. Yes, Roman. Mm. I, I need to get him to like actually join me for golf, I think. That would be a that would be a fun little like little little side session they kind of have like maybe make my debut on his YouTube channel, like have some fun with go. that. People can finally see that I can hit the ball far and, you know, go from there. Like, I am Tiger yeah. Woods incarnate. I'm I'm joking when I say that, but... I probably hit I, farther than you. No, you can't. No, you can't. You don't know. One <laughs> way really to find out. Get your, get your butt down here. <laughs> I need to get a set of golf clubs again. It's been a while. You can just use mine, because then we'll have an even, even playing field. All right, all right, all right. Um, but driver, I will smoke you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't hit the driver very far, so not even gonna. I do. I hit it far, and I'm accurate with it. Oh, look at you! I just shoot to the left, and then it hooks into the middle of the fairway. So, oh, so you have like the fucking the snap fade or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you have the slice. Yeah. That's what you have. You have a slice. Then when it doesn't slice, it goes straight into the houses. So I just take my chances, you know. Uh, I remember those days. I, I, I remember... imagine a majority of the time it's going to slice, so we just go and we roll with it. I remember, so this is a little bit <laughs> off topic. Um, 
there was a time where I played at this course called River Ridge, which is local here in Raleigh. Um, I like the course. It's tough. It's it's uh, made me want to snap my clubs a couple times. But there was one, I think it was the third hole. It was a par, par four all the way uphill. And it's kind of a little bit of dog dead right. But I played with a massive slice then. So I was like, I'm going to aim at the trees dead ahead. And I'm going to hope and pray I slice the living hell out of this ball. Yeah. Um, I hit the ball fat, so I hit the driver. The driver hit the ground like an inch behind the tee, and That's it never good. It somehow corrected my club face to hit it perfectly square, and it went straight <laughs> into the trees ahead of me. Nice. And That's I'm sitting here. God. I look. I looked to my partner, who, by the way, was playing from the tips, <laughs> playing from the tips, and was a really good golfer. And I'm sitting here. It's like, why, why, why am I here? Why, yeah, why do I? I shouldn't be playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, hey, you live and learn. You live and learn. And now I was like confident in driver. I, I really like my driver swing sometimes. And then irons uh, to everything else. We we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Speaking of hitting things bad, um, we're gonna. I don't talk like about... where this is going. <laughs> We're talking about Peyton Tolley and how he's not hitting anymore and is absolutely dominating people on the mound. Um, he went eight and two thirds this weekend, struck out 13, one and a, a third of an inning away from a complete game. Um, weekend before that, he struck out 15, I think over five innings. So he struck out 28 batters total over his last two starts. Has not been hitting at the plate as much anymore. I think this weekend he didn't get one at bat. The weekend before that, I think he only hit on Sunday or something like that. I think it's time to say it's uh, Peyton Tolley, the pitcher, is the winner between the two. I believe so. And like looking at some of the stats here over the past few starts, I got 28, walked only four. Uh, his pitched, what would that be? That'd be 17 and two thirds innings in yeah. the past few starts. I'd say that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, not to mention, not like, he's been pretty fastball heavy too. And that fastball really plays up from the fact that it's like a low nineties, like averages 92 kind of pitch. Um, Mm -hmm. I think he's touched 96 already too, which is a development. I don't recall him ever doing that last year. Um, and he's just looking at the data here too. Like the fastball has missed fast 43% of the time over the past two starts. He has 37 whiffs (laughs) on, 87 swings the past two starts on the fastball Jeez. that that my friends is good <laughs> that is very, very good. good yeah um so yeah, i i think he's i think he's a bad or not a bad an arm at this point um i think tcu is kind of playing that way too like this is one of the more dominant stretches of the year so far and that's saying something when hagan smith has been doing what he's been doing all year and like chase burns has struck out like 10 batters and then like an outing the past yeah. like five or six starts um, this is one of the more underrated uh, durations of dominance this year, and I think he's doing it against Big Twelve play too. So yes, like Oklahoma State's no joke. No, it, they have some good bats in that lineup, and uh, Houston's got some guys too. Um, yeah. Jonathan French has gone over there now. I think they have Harold Cole still from Arkansas. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's been good. It's good lineups. And that Big yeah. 12 conference is not slacking in any way, shape, or form this year either. No, not at all. Um, that's really all we have for stories. So I think it's time to put you on the clock. We don't have a ton here, but I have some questions for you. Okay. Um, mostly related to your favorite team, NC State. So who do you believe in more? Wake Forest baseball or NC State baseball? NC State baseball, sorry. Um, <laughs> and it's a wild take, but I, I dig it. Wild? Excuse yeah. me, I'm faithful. Yeah. I, hey, it's like me saying like Nevada versus LSU. No, I'll take Nevada. For you sure. remember when you were rooting for Nevada and they lost to Dayton? <laughs> we're talking baseball. Okay, right and <laughs> you mentioned you Nevada. I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> uh, okay, so you're picking NC State over Wake. What's the reasoning? Mm-hmm. What are we going with here? Um, I trust the offense more, I think. <laughs> Micah Revis has put in Micah Revis has put in a really good year. Garrett Pennington's starting to get hot. Jacob Cozart always hits. Eli Serrano has been really fascinating this year, and I think he's gonna be one of the most underrated draft prospects this year. 
like Josh Hoagie's turned into something good. Alex Sosa's turned into a really good freshman bat. Um, I think they fall under the same bucket too, where like the pitching's a bit suspect, but like Sam Highfield's turned in some really good starts recently. Mm. Um, the bullpen's gotten better at home. They've just they won the series against Duke, and then they just swept Notre Dame at home. Um, I think they're eight and four in the ACC play now, which is uh pretty good, yeah, in my opinion. But I it, like Jacob Duden's looked really good out of the bullpen. Like I'm kind of in on this team being a bit of a sleeper. Um, but I I think I mentioned it earlier. Like Wake Forest could just flip a switch and decide to be the best team in the ACC again. So, um, but I think at this point in time, I would probably take NC State over Wake Forest right now. And yeah. that's that's an unbiased take. If you want full bias take, bias Tyler's out the door right now. So, <laughs> I at least admit it. You know, we got to hey, sometimes. I, I had to, I had to wear the sweater. We're <laughs> double final four, dude. We were going to get to that question four. later. Okay. Chill out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Brent, okay. So I'm going to go with an outfield comparison here. Uh, I'm going to put a college guy versus a prep guy. Braden Montgomery or Connor Griffin? Braden. Braden. Yep. Yeah. Give me Braden. Um, I think the biggest thing with Braden is like, obviously, we've seen the uptick in, in power this year. It's mm-hmm. incredible bat speed from the left side, and the right side is usable. Like, I think he could definitely yeah. be a, a switch hitter at the next level. Um, because I think there were questions even coming into the year that like this could be a, a guy that just drops switch hitting completely and just stays a lefty. Um, and I'm not saying that's not going to happen still. I think at some point he may have to drop the right handed stance. Um, I mean, we're also talking about an 80 grade cannon in right field that could. I, I think somebody might even give him a shot to, to like try out in center. I could yeah. definitely see that happening. I, I I'm just fully in on Braden Montgomery at this point. There's a reason why he's in the top five on our top 200 because I think it's just he's gonna he's really put himself in a position to where he might be legitimate one one conversation if he's the right price. I think Cleveland might be able to take that and run with it. Love it. Um, one more question before I get into the final one. Um, since we have Caleb Bonimer on this week for interviews, what's the biggest prep update you got for us? Biggest prep update, as in like performances, rises up the board? Um, I don't know about performances per se. Uh, we, I talked about this this morning with somebody, um, and I'm going to name who it is. Jordan Schusterman from Cespedes Barbecue Podcast. Those guys do an amazing job. Um, but he, he asked me to kind of like the same question. Who's the guy that's really kind of popped up on your board a little mm-hmm. bit? Who's, who's something that, mm-hmm. who's someone that could be a top 100 guy by, you know, late May, June, uh, Cole Gibbler from Missouri, Blue Springs High School kid. Uh, I, he was kind of on our radar a little bit last summer because he went to area coach, pitched really well. He was more like an 88 91 kind of guy. Um, I even told Jordan, like, he went to the same showcase as Anson Siebert when he was throwing like 98. And was and Gibbles was, I call him Gibbles, by the way, uh, because I'm a Pokemon freak, but <laughs> Gibbles was 97. In a showcase environment, I'd love to see what that kind of looks like in game. And he's got a really good breaking ball and a and a, and a changeup that's really developing. I think he could be a top 100 guy when it's all said and done. I think Cole Gibbles is, or sorry, I think Cole Gibbler. Sorry, I, I have to get that right. Gibbles. I, I hope that's his actual nickname. If it is, I'm gonna be so happy. Um, but I think I think Gibbles is gonna be a guy that's in the top 100 at the end of the yeah. year. Love it. Uh, my last question for you. Will NC State basketball win the national championship? Which one, men's, men's or women's? Men's. Men's? Yes. Zach Eady has no shot against DJ Burns this weekend. I'm sorry. <laughs> women's side, they're going to beat South Carolina and get to the final. No, they're not. And they're going to win it all, too. Yes, they are. They've beat <laughs> South Carolina before at South Carolina. This was a couple years ago. I'll give you the men's, but I'm not giving you the women's. <laughs> No, we're we're winning both titles this year. I don't want to hear any slander. Um, Zach Eady stands no chance against Steve Burns. Okay. And then the ladies. Here's the thing: the ladies played on a court that was not like the the three point lines were different on each side for whatever reason. But we got stuck with the side that stuck that was longer first, uh-huh. and we had uh-huh. I think it was uh-huh. Aziz. I can't remember. I, I think her last name's James. I think. It, Aziza get James, I think. I can't pronounce her name for the life of me. Um, and if she listens to this, I am so sorry. 
But you also just went off, girl. You, I think she went like six for six from three <laughs> on that side of the court. I, uh, I like, yes, fully give me titles from both teams this year. I, I am fully invested. All right, if you're a betting person, listen to Tyler's advice. All gambling I, advice. Take NC State no, everywhere. No, 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 don't you dare! <laughs> don't you don't put that juju on me. Do don't not not dare. gambling advice. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. I'm um, a passionate fan. I'm not a gambling uh, extraordinaire. So no, neither of us are. Um, before we turn it over to that interview with Caleb Bonimer, who is coming in at number two on our top 100 prospects for prep, and then he's number 15 overall. 15 overall, number three on prep because Orlando's on one ahead. Got it. Got it. Got it. Awesome interview. Great kid. You're going to really like that. Um, we do have some new things you should check out. Again, the MLB draft 2024 class, top 200 prospects board is out. Uh, you get the first 20 for free, five bucks to subscribe. You get the full 200. Um, we have some new videos on the website. Avon Cabral from Brian Recca, Northeastern pitchers at 2025. We got Ethan Anderson from Virginia. Um, Mac and Winslow was on there from Duke that Tyler got Tristan Smith from Clemson. And I know Tyler's going to have some more video from the Virginia Duke series. So be sure to check out all the hard work everybody's doing. Um, and until next time, we'll see you. All righty. We are here with another awesome interview for on the clock powered by prospects live. We got Caleb Bonimer out of Okemos high school in Michigan, um, UVA commit. We're really excited to have you on Caleb. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to join us. Um, the first question we kind of always ask guests are, tell us a little bit about your journey because not everybody knows who you are. Uh, give a little bit of background on yourself and kind of how you got to where you are today. Yeah, for me, uh, it started a lot with my with my family. Um, growing up, playing with my dad, playing with my brother. Um, that was kind of my upbringing in the game, um, being able to play uh, with my brother and his friends because he's a few few years older than me. Um, so that's kind of how I got developed into the game. Um, but yeah, other than that, just once we hit the showcase circuit, um, traveling around the country and all that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, being a, being a Michigan guy, um, especially in the winter, it can get tough because you can't get outside all the time. Um, so yeah, we're always trying to get on the field whenever we can. Um, just trying to put in the work and get better every day. Yeah, just being from a cold weather state, talk about that a little bit, right? Because it's I'm from Arizona originally, so those guys have all year round to kind of train and play. What are the, some of the things that you do kind of to to get yourself in shape when you have those cold weather months and things like that? Yeah, um, it's definitely tough. I mean, like today it's 40 degrees out and we're on the track <laughs> ball field. So, um, and sometimes we can't even do that because it's snowing and stuff, but it's really just any opportunity we can get to get outside. We're, we're basically getting outside. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's really no different. Just still hitting in the cages every day, um, lifting every day. Um, really just the hard part is getting out on the field, getting out on the dirt um, is really the toughest part. But, but yeah, any opportunity we get, we're definitely going to take advantage of it. Yeah, I love it. Um, the other question I kind of go, always go into too is uh, – You've had the kind of the off season you're probably getting ready for or started your high school season. Well, what are some things you're looking to improve on here in 2024? Yeah, um, I think just honing in some things on my swing, um, just mechanically, just some things I've been working on, um, just staying through the ball a little bit better. Um, sometimes I have a tendency also to kind of get a little bit jumpy, get on my front foot. So just trying to stay back a little bit. Um, but yeah, also just um, we do a lot of machine work, especially mm -hmm. like in the in the early off season. I've been doing a lot of machine stuff, seeing high velo, um, like nasty spin rate type stuff. Um, so that's some things I like to do a lot. But but now that we're getting close to the season, just more BP, just feeling good with the swing, um, things like that. Love it. Tyler, turn over to you. Yeah, when does your season start? Um, so actually, our first game is going to be this Thursday. Um, we okay. got back from Florida from our spring break trip. Um, so that was kind of like our first, we had a few scrimmages in Florida this past week. Um, but our first official game will be this Thursday. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just kind of touched on that showcase last year. Cause I remember seeing you at PDP and you showed the tools you had. I remember you hit a, a ground rule double off the batter's eye, which impressed me because that ballpark's insanely hard to really leave the, leave the ballpark. But, um, PG National hit two home runs, really impressed everybody. That was really the event that I thought you really like blew up at. Um, can I just describe that whole showcase thing for you? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you said, uh, started off at PDP. Um, 
I, I struggled a little bit just getting used to the the pitching, getting used to the velo. Um, cause like up here in Michigan, we don't see that a whole lot. So it definitely took a little bit to get adjusted, but I think once I did get adjusted, um, I kind of just played the way I always did. Um, and like you said, PG national, um, after I got a few ABs under my belt at PDP felt pretty good, um, and put up some, some good numbers at PG national. Then, yeah, after that, um, WWBA played well, um, East coast, Pro, East coast pro and area code went well, went well too. Um, but yeah, I mean, over the, I had a blast this whole summer, kind of get, get a little bit of a taste of what pro ball could be like, um, like traveling all over the place, playing every day and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had a blast. There's really nothing else I'd rather do. So I thought the summer was great overall. Perfect. And I did want to ask just like getting to recruit with Virginia. Um, I've, I've spoken with Brian O'Connor. I absolutely love the guy. Um, kind of give your take on like your connection with those guys. Yeah. Um, so for me, it started, it started in like seventh or eighth grade. I went to like a, just like a regular old camp. I got an email and we were like, why not just go try, try it out, see what it's like. Um, but then I re really started recruiting me like freshman year. Um, I got connected with them with my summer coach, um, AJ from artillery, um, started calling, um, having calls with them. Um, then went to another camp. Um, yeah, we just felt really comfortable. Um, the coaching staff, McMullen and O'Connor, um, you couldn't go wrong with it. Um, and just the way they play the game, the culture there, um, just everything about the school really couldn't go wrong. Um, and some that we didn't want to pass up on. Yeah. I live in the Virginia area and, uh, I got to a lot of the games there to the scout and it's just that lineup just always rakes yeah. every single year, year in and year out is absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. Um, next question I got for you is, uh, so we always want to focus on the kind of who you are outside of the game. So what are some of the passions that you have away from baseball, just kind of get your mind off of baseball, um, and kind of get away from the field? Yeah. Uh, for me, I like to golf a lot, um, yeah. over the past two years is something I've started to do a lot more of, uh, me and my buddies, whenever it's nice out and we got some time, we'll usually head out to the course and play. Um, but yeah, it, golf is kind of something that, um, it takes me away from the game, but it also kind of helps me because there's also a mental aspect of the game that I'd like. Um, it can relate to baseball. Um, but yeah, I'd say golfing is definitely one of my bigger hobbies outside of the game. You'll have some good courses in Virginia for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We got to play <laughs> at the, at the course at the, at the school and it was pretty nice. So yeah, it's pretty sweet. Are, are we talking like Tiger Woods skill level here or are we like, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I'm not like super crazy. I mean, like, I'd say shooting in the eighties is kind of where I'm at right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, if I could get pretty good, that'd be pretty sweet. Oh, uh, so you're about the same level as me right now then. So <laughs> yeah. Jerry, do you think we should go ahead and get like a golf tournament set up here? We like, should. I mean, I played all the time when I lived in Arizona, so. Okay. So you're going to be the hot shot here. You're going to like tee off yeah, on everyone. No chance. I haven't <laughs> played in years. I get absolutely smoked. Um, so you talked a little bit too about uh, some of the, the your your family, your parents, uh, your brothers, and stuff like that, uh, kind of as mentors. But who've kind of been some of your biggest mentors, kind of on your journey through baseball? Um, yeah, I mean, I honestly, I'd say yeah, my family. Um, I mean, everything I know, learn from them. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I, I really haven't had many like big time coaches. Um, I mean, um, over the past few years, I've been um, able to work with uh, Hunter Bledsoe, who's my advisor. Um, learning a, a lot of good hitting knowledge from him has been great. Um, but, I mean, growing up, like, I never really had, like, any hitting coaches or fielding coaches or anything like that. Um, so it was really just me and my dad and my brother. Um, but, yeah, I mean, um, my strength my strength coach um, has been great. Um, started working with him, um, I think, my f sophomore year. Um down at down in Detroit, a place called 2SP. Um, they do a great job there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, like I said before, most of my bringing up in the game was just my, my dad and my brother just kind of just having fun. And that's kind of my upbringing in the game, really. Yeah. And I guess the other question I have, too, is you talk a little bit about how, how fun the game is and stuff like that. Um, and then kind of how you went to, to PG National, all these other places and kind of your name skyrocketed. So when did it kind of become a reality to you to like that the MLB draft might be something uh, that's on your radar? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd say definitely uh, this summer and kind of within the past year. Um, but I mean, for me, I always knew I was a great player um, and I just kind of. I never really got to go to these 
like national events. Um, cause actually my sophomore year I got hurt and I, I didn't play at all that entire summer. Um, so I kind of missed out on a lot of stuff that would kind of put me up on all these boards. Um, but yeah, I mean, I always knew I was a great player. I always knew I could play with the best, but, um, I think just being able to do it on the, on the circuit last summer kind of is what did it for me. Cause I mean, I played the same way I always do. I, I always knew I was a great player. And, and I think just being able to do it on that type of stage just helped me a lot. Love it. Uh, Ty, I'll turn it over to you before we get, jump into some rapid fire questions. Yeah. I love the confidence first off. Um, secondly, working on defensive positioning, because I know you've worked at third base and shortstop. Has there been anything you've really focused on in terms of uh, like improving your range or athleticism in those positions? Um. I mean, I think my athleticism is kind of something that's kind of natural for me. Um, I mean, I've always played short growing up, things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, just developing speed um, as a as a somewhat of a bigger guy, bigger guy for shortstop. Um, yeah, I mean, I I I do speed work twice a week, um, and my speed is something that I take pride in in my game. Um, but like defensive work, um, some things I'm working on right now. Um, kind of some glove presentation type stuff because um, sometimes I'll kind of get it down there late and kind of get messed up with that. But, but yeah, and just kind of attacking the ball, working through the ball, just normal things like that, um, just trying to stay sharp. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like I said, if we're up here, it's it's tough to get on the dirt. So it, we're, we're kind of – I'm try, I'm still trying to get acclimated back on the dirt field because we haven't, I haven't really been on a dirt field yet. Um, so we've been taking a lot of stuff on the turf. But – but yeah, I'd say just trying to get back in rhythm with the game, back in rhythm with the dirt is kind of what I'm working at right now. Love okay, it. Cool. All right, we're gonna go into like three rapid fire questions here. Yeah, we always add and put you on the clock. Um, so the first one is, what's the go-to restaurant in your area for you? Uh, for me, I like Ponchero's. It's kind of a Mexican restaurant. It's basically Qdoba, but okay. But yeah, it's, it's basically Qdoba, but a different brand. But yeah, I like that a lot. Love it. Uh, go-to sport that you like to watch outside of baseball? Um, honestly, probably golf. Um, yeah. I, I like watching the majors. I like watching the masters a lot. Um, that's coming up. So, yeah, probably golf. Who would you rather have, Max Homa or Rory McIlroy? Uh, <laughs> that's tough. Uh, probably Mac <laughs> McIlroy. Um, my favorite guy is Kepka, though. He's my okay. guy that I like to watch a lot. But yeah. yeah, Tyler, you got one? And now I got to ask since you mentioned Kepka, PGA or or Live Golf. <laughs> uh, I'm more of a PGA guy. I mean, I, I do understand the Live because I mean you really can't pass up that money. But personally, I'm more of like a historic like achievements type guy. Like I'd rather like win a bunch of tournaments and things like that. But yeah, I'd probably PGA. Hey, cool. Yeah. Love it. Caleb, we can't thank you enough for taking the time to join us and on the clock. Uh, we're wishing you nothing but the best of the upcoming season. Looking forward to uh, everything you accomplish. 